And finally, <laughs> new rule. Everyone has to admit that even though Bernie Sanders didn't win the nomination, he's already won the future. Now... Now, last week in this space, I talked about how socialism was something America needs more of to curtail capitalism, because the profit motive creates horrible incentives like keeping people sick, putting too many of them in jail, always being at war, and treating a woman touching Donald Trump's hair as breaking news. <laughs> but let's not romanticize socialism the way conservatives romanticize capitalism. These are economic systems, not your first kiss. <laughs> so, if you say... <laughs> if you say the word socialism to people under 40, the reaction is night and day from that of baby boomers, for whom socialism has always been seen as communism's gay cousin. <laughs> <laughs> But for millennials, the word socialism doesn't conjure up images of Stalin and Castro. It conjures up images of naked Danish people on a month-long paid vacation. <laughs> millennials don't remember a threatening Soviet Union or any Soviet Union. The only time they've ever had to crouch under a desk was to go down on their teacher. <laughs> So, so the new generation is ready for socialism. Problem is, they may be ready for a little too much socialism. Almost two-thirds of Sanders voters want free college and free universal health coverage for no more than an extra thousand dollars in taxes, even though that's not really socialism. That's Santaism. <laughs> And look, no one is arguing that millennials haven't gotten a rotten deal in this economy, but they've also gotten too used to getting shit for free. Yeah. We... <laughs> We've accepted that the new normal in America is people in their 20s and even 30s still on their parents' cell phone plans and health care plans and mom and dad still paying the car insurance, and almost a third of them are still living at home. And if you're a millennial, you may never have known the concept of paying for things that all of us used to pay for. I'm a baby boomer. I think the natural order of things is to pay for music I like. <laughs> <laughs> to do less than that doesn't make you a revolutionary. It makes you the person who goes to the bathroom when the check comes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not just music. Pornography. <laughs> I was still in my prime masturbating years when... <laughs> when porn became free, and I saw how it decimated a proud industry... <laughs> ..that once produced full-length features with plots and pubic hair. And just like with musicians, the men and women of the adult industry who entertain and divert and, yes, release million... <laughs> <laughs> millions of Americans every day deserve to be paid for what they do. <laughs> Think about the long hours put in by horny housewives and naughty secretaries and the hard-working, shaved-head, dead-eyed meth addicts plowing them. <laughs> They're not doing it for shits and giggles. That costs extra. <laughs> when I hear about people stealing porn, I have one question. Where do you get off? Porn doesn't just happen, people. Locations must be scouted, sets must be... <laughs> sets must be built, wood must be maintained. <laughs> the, 
The point is, if you add up all the free things that the under 40 crowd is used to getting from the quick jerk at work <laughs> to being able to sit in Starbucks all day for the price of a scone, from music to Wi-Fi to birth control, it's not such a jarring proposition when socialism comes along and says you are entitled to free stuff. And that, in turn, must be why there's this proliferation of websites like Kickstarter and GoFundMe. GoFundMe? Go fund yourself. <laughs>